This is just a short video with an update on my Raspberry Pi Pixel Server. The Pixel Server allows you to use a Raspberry Pi to control RGB LEDs, sometimes known as NeoPixels, using a web interface. The project was originally controlled using a graphical interface created in Tekinta, but I've since replaced that using IoT technology based around Python and Flask. When I released the code previously, and it just had a few sequences, but I've now created alternatives to all the ones I had previously and added lots more flexibility with a better interface. The obvious advantage of using a web server is that it's easy to control without needing access to the GUI directly. Previously needed a physical screen or to use VNC. This also has the advantages in that it can be used with home automation to turn the lights on and off automatically at night. The new Pixel server can even be run without needing an internet connection by configuring the Raspberry Pi as a wireless access point and downloading the appropriate jQuery files to be served locally. I won't be going through the full details, that's already explained in my earlier video. See the video linked at the top of this video now, or the link in the description. What I will show is a few of the new sequence options and how you can recreate some of the other sequences by using specific colours. Here's a quick run through the interface. At the top, there's the apply button. Nothing happens until you press this button, which allows you to set up your next sequence in advance. Next to it is the reverse button. This causes different things to happen depending upon the sequence, but it typically either changes the order of the colors or the direction when using a chaser, etc. The next section are the sequences. I'll come back to those later but this is the main part of this video. The speed is a simple dial allowing you to add delay to the speed that the sequences run at. If you move it to the left, then it increases the delay, which is in milliseconds. Move it to the right, then it decreases the delay. If you go all the way to the right, then it'll run at the full speed that it's physically possible, although Chances are that would be too fast for most sequences. The next section allows you to pick the colours for the LEDs. And you can pick multiple colours by clicking on them in order and it will set these colours across here. The default colour with non-selected goes back to white and that will use white for all the LEDs. One other thing to be aware of is that you can use black. And black means that the LED doesn't come on at all. But that can be really useful if you want to have a certain sequence with some LEDs switched off. Now to explain some of the sequences. All off is fairly self-explanatory, as is all on. But all on will use all the LEDs listed in the colours in the order specified. Random is next, which will choose any of the sequences randomly. It will run that entire sequence and then choose another sequence again at random. You can specify the colours or leave to the default of one white LED, in which case it will choose a different colour combination from many of the different sequences. Flash will flash the LEDs on and off. Then the chaser is the standard chaser sequence which goes round in a loop. If you want an LED turned off, then you can just add a black LED, as I've shown here. Chaser change colour is a chaser, but using a single colour at a time, and then changing to the next colour periodically. It shows it as four coloured LEDs, followed by four LEDs turned off. This is one sequence where you probably don't want to include any black LEDs in the colours, unless you want to pause between the colours. Chase the solid background just has your selected colours going across the screen. Chaser fill end has an LED flying across the sequences one at a time, filling up from the far end. The colour wipes go across the screen, turning all the pixels either on or off. The colour wipe on starts with all blank 
LEDs and lights the LEDs, whereas the colour off starts with all the big LEDs lit and then turns them off again. The colour wipe on off alternates between colour wipe on and then colour wipe off. The colour wipe in and out are the same as the colour wipes but starting from or going into the middle from both ends. The in-out sequence alternates between two of these to produce a repeated effect. The rainbow sequence changes the LEDs around the colours of the rainbow. It effectively goes around a colour wheel when changing the hue value. The rainbow cycle changes colour more gradually, allowing an entire strip of the same colour at a time. Then the rainbow theatre chase is a chaser effect but using the rainbow colours. One of the unique th things about this particular sequence is that it is based on the number of colours you select in the colours option but not the actual colours themselves because the colours are generated as part of the colour wheel. If you've seen the GUI I created then whilst I've added some new ones you may notice some sequences I haven't added to the new web-based interface. The reason for this is that with the new way that the colours are used it means that you don't need to. The way that the colours have been implemented in this new interface provides much more flexibility. For example, to replace the two colour chase, then you can use two colours separated by black LEDs and then with some more black LEDs at the end. And that would be the chaser. Or, to replicate the twinkle chase sequence, use the chaser but with four coloured LEDs and then one black LED and that will have the same effect. You could also add your own sequences. I explained that in an early video, but you do need to have a reasonable understanding of Python first. If you have an idea of a particular sequence that you would think would be useful for others as well, then let me know in the comments and I may be able to add that. You can find the install instructions on my website or GitHub page. If you've already installed the server code, then you can upgrade to the latest version by performing a git pull or by downloading the latest version and saving it over your existing install. Most of these are already implemented on my Arduino version as well. So you can use either a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino RP2040. One thing to be aware of is this is designed to be run on a local network and it relies on the network security to restrict who can change the sequences. That's something I may look into in future, although it's partly by design because this is designed to allow use in home automation and makes it simple to change the sequences by using wget with the cron tab. I hope that this has been useful. Please let me know in the comments if you have implemented this yourself or if you have any other suggestions. If you haven't already subscribed, please click on the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified of future videos. I look forward to seeing you in a future video.